Hey, good morning, Father and Aurora. Um, happy Monday. I hope you guys all had a fantastic Easter weekend. Uh, it was super great to have Easter on my couch. Uh, a little weird, um, as everybody has said a million times, but also super cool. Um, loved the service and the worship. Everything was great. So, um, and then we just had a nice day as a family hanging out. Uh, my sister and I cooked a little bit and so yeah it was low key but it was also really nice um hope you're staying warm in this weather uh and safe so yeah um we're gonna jump into chapter three of colossians today um so obviously last week we finished chapter two uh and paul really outlines um like the false teachers and um, I'm sorry, the false teachings um, that w that were going on in Colossians, and then also just reminds the Corinthian, the Corinthians. Oh my goodness, uh, the Colossians of who who Jesus is and uh, why he came to came why he came, and then also just their life in Christ. So, uh, chapter three in Colossians kind of marks a transition in the letter. So Paul steps away from talking about the the false teachings to um, outlining. Uh, just the like the Christian life and living in a in a way that's uh, worthy of, of Christ. So he he outlines that. So I'll read it and we'll go verse by verse. All right. I'll put my glasses on. So if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on this earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So a short little section here, but um, Paul has a lot to say. So he starts, so basically... If then, he he's, he opens the, the chapter with if then. So that is just referring to, so if everything above in chapter two is true, then um, then we need to do this. So, you know, um, if, you know, you are a believer and you believe um, these things that Christ came from and, or Christ came for, um, and then these are the things you are to be focusing on and doing. Uh, so, um, first he says where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And basically this is, uh, Paul's giving the authority to Jesus. So he's saying, Hey, you know, Christ is at the right hand of God. So he is seated, um, in heaven at the right hand of God. So he's interceding for us, um, every day, uh, our prayers and different things like that. He's, he's interceding on our behalf and he's giving Jesus the authority uh, so he opens with that. Then he goes on to set your, to say, set your minds on things that are above, not on the things of this earth. And, um, what a good reminder. I think, especially for me, uh, I tend to, to be like a task oriented person. I think you probably may have picked that up, especially on Sundays with like load in and load out. I get pretty caught up in like the different things I, I feel like I need to do. Um, and so sometimes Jesus can become just a checklist item to me, uh, where I, I have a to-do list every day and it's like, okay, read my Bible, check, move on, you know, uh, go cook breakfast or go whatever, uh, is my next thing. And I don't really set my mind, um, on things that are above. Um, I kind of get focused on the things I have to do or need to do or, or just get scatterbrained with just everything going on and don't really focus, um, on who Jesus is and what he says. And, um, and you know, the result of that is not deepening my knowledge uh, of Jesus. Um, and, and that's, and, and, and Paul's calling that out, you know, he says, no, do set your, your mind on things above, um, deepen your knowledge, um, study the Bible, know who Jesus is, know who you are in Jesus. Um, you know, keep studying and don't focus on the things of this earth. You know, they're fleeting. They'll, they're going to fade away one day. Um, but Jesus won't. And so really focus on, on that. So uh, that's verse two. And then uh, Paul goes on to say, for if you have died uh, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So here Paul uses um, some language from the Psalms. Um and I think he does that. He does that obviously purposefully. Um, 
because I think the, the people of uh, Corinth would be really familiar with that language. And so he uses it to express like the security that um, Christian believers have in Christ um, if, uh, as they trust in him. So I'll go ahead and read those Psalms for you guys. And then we can talk about them a little bit. So the first one is Psalms 27 verses 5 through 6. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon the rock, and now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy, and I will sing and make a melody to the Lord. So basically in the Psalms, um, the writer is just outlining that we are, our, our true safety is with Jesus, with with Christ, um, and that no matter what's going on around us, so you can replace enemies with whatever else, with whatever, you know, loss of a job, or um, addiction, or, you know, loss of a family member, or whatever uh, it is, and, uh, you know, Christ sees that, and he, and he knows that, um, and we are, and, and because we're in him, uh, we're secure and we're safe. And so we need to trust and, and rely on that. Uh, and then the other Psalms, Paul, uh, the, or the other Psalms Paul quotes here is Psalms 31. Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you. In the sight of, or I'm sorry, take refuge, take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. In the cover of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You store them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. So again, talks about um, you know the Lord keeping us safe and that we can have confidence in that as well. Um, so Paul uses this language um, and um, that our life is hidden in, in Christ, in God. Um, and so that's where our true safety comes from. So no matter what's going on in the world or going on around us, we have safety and security in Christ. So then in verse 4, when Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with him in glory. Um, so this verse is talking about, um, you know, the centrality of Christ and how he's just the center of everything. And um, so the believers that know that Christ is their life. So believers know that, that Christ is their life. They've taken that on, um, you know, when they've, you know, died to the, themselves and they've, they've taken on Christ, um, Christ's life. So when Christ returns um, and all the perfection and the glory, the, the believers will share in that. So Paul's reminding the believers of that um, in, in uh, Colossians here. So um, there's a lot you know, packed into this, but I think some of the main applications and just some of the things to think about. Um, obviously, the first one is, is set your minds on things that are above. So, you know, today, just with all the different things, even in quarantine, I know there's stuff that, you know, we still think about and we still have to do. And not that those things are not important, um, but just to take a minute and really set our minds and focus on on the on the things that are above, on, on who Jesus is and who he is. Um, and what he says is true about us. Um, and in, the, in that, there's a lot of peace. Um, and in the chaos of what's going on right now, I think that is super, super helpful. And then also um, just trusting in, in God. And I know that's hard. I know that is so hard because a, a lot of us are in the middle of, of really crazy things. Um, you know, like, really? I'm supposed to trust God when I lost my job. And Paul here says, yes, yes, he's got it. Um, that he's not surprised by any of this, by what you're going through. Um, and he knows the outcome. And so to cling on to the hope, um, that Jesus is supreme over everything and he's in control, uh, over everything. Um, and that he knows the other side of that. I mean, that's very encouraging to me that like, okay, I don't have to control the outcome because Jesus already knows. Um, and so if I just trust that and walk day in and day out with him, things are going to be okay. Um, so yeah, a lot packed into those first four verses. Um, super great to do this with you. We all have had a, a lot of fun doing it and um, hope that you guys have enjoyed it as well. Um, 
So tune back in for, or tomorrow, uh, for the next section of chapter three. Uh, and we love you guys. Uh, reach out with any prayer requests, anything you guys need, uh, thoughts, questions, whatever. Um, we'd love to hear from you. All right. Thanks, Aurora.